We're going to take a look at a lot of experiments that are done on this gravity flyer today. Hopefully by the time it's done you'll understand a lot more about this machine. Anyway, let's get into it. The high voltage flyback transformer circuit is the first thing we attach to our gravity flyer. Yet we don't want high voltage out of it at all. We actually want static electricity. We can do a simple static electricity experiment. Take a piece of PVC pipe, rub it with a cloth, and put it next to a can. It'll make the can move. We can do the exact same thing with a high voltage circuit. They both create a polarizing field. However, since we know that the can is aluminum, there's also a magnetic field present because of the eddy current. This is the paper lifter experiment. It uses a static field from a Wimhurst machine in order to move a paper lifter between two plates, one smaller on the bottom, one larger on the top. Let's repeat this experiment. But instead of using a Wimhurst machine to drive the static electricity in it, let's take two flyback transformers put in series in order to create the same exact effect. The reason for the two flyback transformers is so that we can reduce the amps going through them. More volts, less amps, gives you a static electric charge. Now let's change the experiment a little. We are now going to put the positive and negative to the tops of each one of these. We are going to use the bottom with an earth ground, not a high voltage source or a static electric source on the bottom, but earth ground. As you can see, the experiment still works properly. The reason this still works in this experiment is because the earth naturally creates static electricity. To our gravity flyer, this part is very important. Now we understand that we're creating an energy that can interact with the Earth's ground. We also know that if we put a corona motor in the sky, we can actually get positive static charge as well. This tells us that we're living in a field of energy. The top of the sky is positive, the ground is negative. We are simply taking our gravity flyer and putting it in between those fields. Now that we know our high voltage is actually a static charge, let's take a look at what it should look like on your gravity flyer. We have now created two toroidal fields of a static electricity, one on the top disc, one on the bottom disc. We now need to add our Tesla coil to the gravity flyer. With our Tesla coil on, let's take the wire that's connected to the center plate of our gravity flyer and let's place it down the center of the Tesla coil. The gravity flyer itself is now charged and lights up the light bulb. The coupling of the two makes the gravity flyer our toroidal on top of our Tesla coil. Now that we see them as one unit, we can now understand this a little better. The Tesla coil is a capacitor to the ground. Now our gravity flyer is a capacitor to ground. Much like the high voltage coil, we're not looking for the same effect that we get out of a Tesla coil. We're looking for something a little different. As we place the wire down the center of our Tesla coil, we see that it arcs. We normally understand this as the air itself being charged by the Tesla coil. To prevent the discharge, we tape the end of the wire. It now gets placed down the center of the secondary PVC pipe. As you can see, we get an arc from the wire to the PVC pipe. The PVC pipe itself is non-conductive. It is picking up a charge from the Tesla coil itself. The difference between an arc and a static charge is the amount of amps that we put into this Tesla coil. By drawing down the amps on our Tesla coil, we can create a field that interacts with the two spinning disks that are on our gravity flyer. 
because they are statically charged and because the less amp that's in a Tesla coil creates more of a static charge, the two fields will interact properly. There's also another reason why these two fields will interact properly. It comes down to how you built your circuits for your Tesla coil and your high voltage. This is my Tesla coil circuit. It is simply a transistor that turns on and off in order to oscillate my Tesla coil. This is my high voltage driver circuit. It uses a single MOSFET in order to drive my high voltage coil. In this case, I added frequency to it. Both circuits use a DC power source. They also use a mimic sine wave, otherwise known as a square wave. We now take a look at our motors on our gravity flyer. As we see in this experiment, we are trying to adjust the motor speeds so that they can interact properly together. We are looking for motor coupling. This means that the upper disc has slowed down. The lower disc has sped up. Because the bottom plate has magnets, it creates an eddy current in the center disc and also the upper disc. Just a The motors themselves are now working in tandem, and the center plate has a heavy vibration that's coming from it. To see what the vibration does to the Tesla coil, we set up this simple experiment. We use an ultrasonic cleaner's transducer in order to mimic this effect. The wire is then connected to the metal plate and brought over to the Tesla coil. This is the result. We're getting a feedback frequency that interacts with our Tesla coil. I call it an alien sound. Others may see it as a fishing reel sound. At this point, we need to connect in our piezoelectric disc. It goes in the top portion of your gravity flyer. We're also going to connect a frequency generator to the circuit. With the piezoelectric circuit on, otherwise known as the ultrasound circuit, we start to get a state of resonance in the center disc. At this point, we're going to adjust the frequency on our piezoelectric disc. What we're looking for is the maximum resonance that we can get out of it while the motors are in a coupled state. How about I just measure the, the high voltage and then I'll turn off the ultrasound. All right. Yeah, there we go. I'm at negative 17, negative 18. Yeah, I maxed out the thing on the bottom. So right now on the bottom, it's got plenty of charge. If I pulse the ultrasound and then measure that again, we'll see I have lost the uh, strong negative voltage on the bottom. Um, voltage on the top, negligible. We're at like 0.4 kV on top. So right now we're in a good state to pulse the ultrasound. So off, one, two, Three, four, five. On. One, two, three, four. Off. One, two, three. On. One, two. Off. One, on. Off. Every time the ultrasound is turned off, the energy from the bottom disc is then thrust into the center disc itself. Before the upper disc can get charged again, the ultrasound is turned back on. Because the Tesla coil has a neutral field, it is not charged positive or negative. The bottom disc, however, is charged to negative and does have a like field to the Tesla coil. Therefore, the negative charge is now infecting the Tesla coil charge 
that is now the gravity flyer, and it all becomes a negative charge for a brief few seconds. Every test that we looked at today has to do with the lift factor on the gravity flyer. When we go back to look at what Alexi said about his gravity flyer, is that he compared it to the Earth and the magnetosphere on the Earth. That the top has a positive charge, that the ground has a negative charge. Based on all the testing that we looked at today, it appears that Alexi is being proven right on exactly how he thought his gravity flyer was working. There are still a lot of tests to be done on this gravity flyer. A lot of things that we're going to have to learn about the actions and interactions of each part on this gravity flyer. I personally like it better this way. I like to discover the new things that are going on here. And I like to go back and prove people right. This is one of those cases where so far it looks like he was right on on exactly how he described his craft versus exactly how it's working. If you like what you saw here today, please like, share, subscribe, do all those fun things, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.